Hey guys, it's Chris, the tiny house guy. Got a new video for you today. I'm gonna show you my latest project. And this project is the ammo can up down drive thingy that I just built. A lot of bugs out today, so you're probably gonna see them. So basically I built this uh, out of uh, mostly an ammo can. This motor, this is a tart motor for a dump truck that you can get on Amazon. I'll put the links in the comments below. This, this is a standard Ryobi tool battery. And that is a uh, adapter for battery that I also bought on Amazon. And this thing is powered by basically power tool batteries. I removed the crank assembly. I left the, uh, the old plate there just so that I have a little bit of support for the box. This box is a little flexible, but it's not Terrible, terrible. Let's look inside and show you what we got here. So a little plexiglass uh, divider in here. So I have put my DRO inside. I want to take this out. I can take this out. I'll show you what's inside a little more. So we can see the uh, at the top up here. Let me see if we can zoom. There we go. I'll zoom in and give you some really good video. So that's the uh, the battery. Two wires come off the battery. That is a uh, that relay right there, right here. That is a relay, it's a reversing relay used for winches on ATVs. And then of course we've got this motor, which is coupled to the shaft collar with a, this is a three quarter inch on this side and a half inch on this side. Turns out that the shaft that uh, Woodland Mills uses isn't quite half an inch. So I actually had to wrap it with a 10 mil shim, shim stock in order to get it to, to bite. Um, and I think this shaft collar is a little bit too rigid. Uh, it's fine. It's fine for what it is. And it's not going to be since it's running 24 seven, nothing's bad's going to happen. But if you could find a shaft collar that's a little bit more flex in it, uh, it would help to a little, any of the misalignments that you're inevitably going to get between the motor and the, the machine. This wobbles a little bit when it runs. Uh, if I had a better shaft collar, I would uh, probably take advantage of it. All right, so I put the DRO on. I have it zeroed out at one inch. Um, this is the switch that we use. And so if you uh, hit the switch, you see that it, uh, it goes up. So it's reasonably fast. All right, so let's do a precision test just to see, you know, can we is this thing controllable enough so that we could, you know, actually cut the way we want to cut? So I'm going to, so right there I'm going to be, so I've zeroed this now. So now I want to make a one inch cut. So if I just go down, oh that, seven, nine, so that way overshot. Let me just go back up. So now I'm at six tenths, seven, eight, nine. So that's probably where I would want to be. Let's say I want to go down to two inches. I'll just do a two inch cut. So let's... 2.9, 2.1. So yeah, I mean, with you're gonna have to be fast on the switch, but it is. I mean, you can. That's reasonably okay. I think you can, with a little finagling and some being fast on the switch, you can get it to within you know the 30 to 60 thousandths, which is what you want, 16th of an inch uh, allowance for the blade. Let's try it again. I'm gonna zero that out. Go back to there. Let's go back to zero. Let's just do another one inch. You can get a sense of it. Bugs are awful today. So it's 1.02, so I wouldn't want to cut right there. I want just a tiny little bit more. So 60 thousandths, 16th of an inch curve allowance. I don't think that's terrible. So again, this is it. It's made out of an ammo can, tarp motor run off of Ryobi tool batteries.